exponents. This I can rewrite as the 2 is going to stay in the top of the fraction, the 3 is going to the denominator, and then I can kick this x to the 1 third down here. So you're just going to look at this. Is there anything that's going to make this quantity come out undefined? Well, any time you try to divide by 0, that's when you get your infinity or undefined. Well, 3 times what will give me 0? Well, if this is 0, because 0 to the 1 third is still 0. So it is undefined when x equals 0. Let me go through that again. If I have 1 minus 2 divided by 0, 2 divided by 0 is infinity or undefined. So I'm looking for an x value that makes this denominator equal 0, and it happens to be 0. So I've got an undefined. So I've got two critical points. One where the derivative equals 0, which means this is either a max, a min, or a horizontal plateau. This is either a cusp or a vertical plateau, because it's undefined at 0. So let's see what we've got. We'll make our little number line graph. And I've only got the two critical points. I've got the 0, and I've got the 8 27. So I just need to know what's happening before, in between, and after. I know the 0 is the undefined or infinity, whichever one you want to write down. Here, uh, the 827th is where the derivative actually came out 0. So, go type in the derivative function, because we want to know whether the derivative is positive or negative in between these key values, because that tells us everything we need to know about the original function. So I will type in the 1 minus 2 thirds x raised to the negative 1 third table set. I want to see at 0. I'll start there, before and after the 0. Let's see, point, I don't know how big 827. I'm going to go uh, change this to point zero zero one just in case. All right, there's my error. After the 0, I'm negative, so it's negative in here. Before the 0, I'm positive. So that means the function went up and it went down. So I've got some kind of a maximum with an undefined derivative. That's a cusp. So I've got a maximum cusp here. And then here, go back to my table set. I'll have it start at 8 27 table. I better see a 0 there. I do. After it, my y values are all positive. So that means the graph went down, then went back up. This makes this a minimum. Should be getting good at those now. All right. Um, two more. One algebraically, one graphically. Going over here. Twenty-three. Oh, there it is. Yeah, negative exponents. Okay, I'm gonna start a new page. Okay, example three. F of x equals x to the five thirds plus 5x to the 2 thirds. Okay, we want to find critical points on f of x and f prime of x. Oh, I forgot that part, didn't I? Yes, I did. Oh, good thing. Forgot my critical points. Hold on. Pair. Critical points on f prime of x. Now, we're not going to make the table for this part. We're just going to find them. So I need the second derivative. And so I'm going to do derivative of this. So the derivative of 1 is 0. And the derivative here, I'm going to bring down the negative 1 third, multiply it by the negative 2 thirds. It's going to give me a positive 2 ninths. x to the subtract 3 thirds. That's going to give me negative 4 thirds. Okay. So... So I've got to set it equal to 0 and see if it's undefined. Uh, where was 
was I? Oh yeah, here we go. So uh, I want to know when this equals zero. So first thing I'm going to do is divide by the two ninths. Two ninths divide by the two ninths. So that gives me x to the negative four thirds equals zero. So that makes this one over x to the four thirds equals zero. If I try to flip this, look at what happens on this this side over here. I get x to the four thirds equals one over zero. That's infinity, that's undefined. There is no solution that makes the second derivative equal zero. But there is a solution that makes it undefined. What's gonna make two over nine x to the four thirds be undefined? What's going to make this denominator zero is an x value of zero. So I do have the undefined at zero here. So that means there's something going on on the derivative graph at zero, a cusp or that vertical plateau. Okay, finish that one. Now back to this one. Make sure I finished writing it down. Let's see. Well, I don't know how easy that was for you to go back and fix. Sorry. Uh, here I am. Okay, that was the problem. Okay, so derivative five thirds x subtract three thirds. That's going to leave me with two thirds plus multiply down. I'll have ten thirds x subtract three thirds, it's going to leave me with negative one third. Okay, we want to know when it equals zero and if it's undefined. With this negative exponent, we are going to have the undefined. So let's go with the zero first. Okay, I would factor out um, the five thirds and you take out, you can't factor with negative exponents. You take out the smaller of the two and the negative one third is the smaller one. So we are going to take out a 5 thirds x to the negative 1 third. So the 5 thirds is gone. To see what's left, you, when we take this out, we divide it out. And when we divide, we subtract exponents. So what I'm actually going to do to figure this out is take this 2 thirds and subtract a negative 1 third that I took out. So think 2 thirds subtract the negative 1 third that I took out. That becomes plus a positive. Two thirds plus one third is three thirds one. This just turns into x to the first. And if you want to check yourself, multiply it back in. When I add this one to the negative one third, I better get the two thirds back, and I do. One plus the negative one third is two thirds. Okay, plus. Uh, I had ten thirds divided out five thirds. That's going to leave me with a two and the x to the one third is out. So now it's um, set each product uh, equal to zero. So five thirds, actually make it a positive exponent. Does that equal zero? And when does x plus two equal zero? Here's the easy one, x equals negative two. So critical point there. Think about this, is this ever going to equal zero here? Not a chance, because when I flip it over, I get 3x to the 1 third over 5 equals 1 over 0. There's my infinity. No solution here. But this does help me right here with the undefined. Is this function ever going to be undefined? 5 thirds x to the negative one-third times x plus two undefined. Again, it's when your denominator equals zero. I don't know why I didn't write it with the over. x to the one-third. So what value for x is going to make this whole denominator equal zero? Uh, that's a big fat zero. So we've got um, two critical points, negative two and zero. Make the little 
number line graph to identify what they are. Okay, negative 2 was when the function equaled 0, the derivative. So that means this is either a max, min, or horizontal plateau. The 0 is when it was undefined, or infinity. So we've either got a cusp or a vertical plateau. Only two options there, three options here. We need to know what's happening in between to tell what they are. That's when you grab your little handy-dandy calculator, type in your derivative equation, and check. So 5 thirds, x raised to the 2 thirds, plus 10 thirds, x raised to the negative 1 third. Again, I'm going to have the table start at negative 2 and look before and after. So table set. Start at negative two, and you want a very small increment. You don't want well. This one's like, you don't want to jump past the zero. You don't want to put like five in here and check what's happening because you need to jump past this zero here. But I'm good with what I've got. So at negative two, there's my zero. After the or actually before the negative two, well, in here I've got a negative. On the left hand side, I've got a positive. So that tells me the function's increasing, decreasing. So I know this is now a max. I'm checking to see whether this is a cusp or a vertical plateau. So I got to put in the zero. And I'll look after that. Okay, I'm back to positive. So it went down and back up. So that must be a cusp, a minimum cusp to be specific. Cusp is the important part there. Minimum, not so much. Okay, and then the second part is to find critical points on this graph. So I use the second derivative to do that. So the second derivative, multiplying the two-thirds down, that's going to give me ten-ninths. X, subtract one from here, it's going to give me negative one-third. Let's see, plus, actually, it's going to be a minus ten-ninths minus ten ninths x to the negative four thirds and I, and I want to know when that equals zero and when it's undefined. So I'm going to factor first do the zero. So again which one's smaller negative one third or negative four thirds? And smaller just means it's, think about a number line if you're farther to the left you're smaller. So on a number line, the negative four-thirds is the smaller of these two because it's farther to the left on the number line. So we're going to factor out ten-ninths x to the negative four-thirds. So I'll have a one left there. And again, subtract the exponents. Start with this one, subtract this one. So think, negative one-third, subtract a negative four-thirds. That becomes plus. So negative 1 plus 4 is a 3. 3 thirds is a 1. That's going to give me an x. Minus, take all of that out. I've got a 1 left in its place. And I want to know when this equals 0. Again, no negative exponents. So if I rewrite that, I've got 10 over 9x to the 4 thirds. I want to know when that equals 0. And I've already seen this twice now. I know there's no solution here. The only thing I can get is an undefined out of this. Here, x minus 1 equals 0. That happens when x equals 1. So I've got a critical point here. The derivative equals 0, so it's a max, a min, or a horizontal plateau. Now as far as undefined, I'm just going right back to here and say it's going to be undefined when this denominator is 0. So I'll have 10 divided by 0 for undefined. Uh, that's going to happen when x is 0.